today we are in the midst of very very exciting times the world is going through rapid changes enabled by technology and human aspiration and ambition we are in the midst of exciting times where we see organizations companies institutions coming up with products and solutions that we had never seen before we are elevating experience of the consumer to the next level these solutions and products of are of the highest quality they are of superior quality experience they create can be described as never before experience so we live through this exciting times these exciting times also has have its share of complications challenges it also brings in lot of anxiety in the minds of people it brings in more uncertainties we talk about technologies like generative ai which could virtually take away many kinds of jobs that humans are performing today that could mean loss of jobs jobs loss of employment that could mean lot of stress anxiety in the society so now this is the time and this time is about leadership this time is about leaders stepping up and helping organizations teams individuals to navigate through the complexities and challenges that the world has to offer so that's what leadership innovative leadership is all about before we get before we dive deeper into the subject let's start with a very fundamental question what is the difference between creativity and innovation creativity is out of box thinking it is about lateral thinking creativity is about thinking very very differently innovation is an outcome of creative thinking is not enough to think creatively the creative thinking must lead to something which is tangible when creativity or creative thinking translates into an outcome which is of value to an organization or to a nation or to the world we call it innovation so creativity is essential for innovation but creativity alone may not always translate into tangible outcomes which can be described as innovation when we talk about innovation there are typically three levels of innovation that we see one is incremental so if an organization is processing x number of transactions in a month and if the organization is able to increase the number of transactions the process in a month by 20% that can be called incremental improvement or incremental innovation incremental innovation is always in in a, in terms of, it can be measured as a small percentage increase it can be of value to the organization and great organizations continuously make improvemental incremental improvements to the products and services like every time apple launches a new product 
a new version of iPhone, we always see some incremental changes. Maybe the camera features are better. Maybe the, the audio is much better. Maybe there are new features added, but they can be incremental. Breakthrough innovation is something which provides an organization a huge competitive advantage. If an organization is able to process about 10,000 transactions, but if they come up with a solution by which now they can exponentially increase the number of transactions they're able to perform, possibly by the use of a technology, this can be called breakthrough uh, innovation. If an organization moves, takes a giant leap from 10,000 transactions to a few million transactions, this could really be breakthrough. So breakthrough innovation always brings a competitive advantage to an organization. But in today's world where innovation is the buzzword, when everybody is trying to go for innovation, when every company is innovating, it's very difficult to predict how long that competitive advantage would stay with an organization because your competition is always trying to get better than you and others in the marketplace. Transformational innovation is something which can change the way we live, we work. Transformational innovation can be a revolutionary evolution which could bring great value to the mankind at large or to the world at large. For example, the invention of electricity. For example, the, the advent of internet. Even in recent times, artificial intelligence. These innovations are transformational. They drive radical changes with implications across the globe. And I've, I've talked about a few, I've shared a few examples of transformational innovation, how this can, how some of these have radically transformed the way we not only do business, we live our life, we communicate, we engage with others, we do business and so on. Now the question is, what should the organization focus on? Incremental, breakthrough, or transformational? My two cents should be at least two out of these three. You know, if you, re if as an organization, if you really want to be ahead of the curve, you must be focusing at least two out of these three. An organization yeah. which focuses on incremental and breakthrough innovation they could stay ahead of competition consistently. Incremental innovation sometimes is believed as not so impactful, but an organization continuously trying to bring an improvement in the products or services it is bringing to the, to the consumers or the customers actually can create build a lot of credibility. Breakthrough is, of course, absolutely important because if you are not coming up with breakthrough innovations, somebody else is going to come, come, come back or come through breakthrough innovation and you probably would be in the catching up mode. So best in class organizations absolutely focus on incremental and breakthrough innovation consistently. Transformational innovation does not happen every day because it is transformational. You know, you don't invent something like internet every day or every month. While organizations could focus on that, sometimes it might take years to achieve a transformational innovation because this is infrequent infrequent and sometimes rare but the implications 
can be absolutely exponential. But when we talk about all of this, a lot of this breakthrough and transformational innovation is generally driven by technology. And today, everybody wants to jump the bandwagon. Everybody wants to have access to the best technology and want, everybody wants to use the best technology. Everybody wants to learn the best technology. But we'll have to keep one thing in mind. The most important thing is technology, technology accelerates momentum, but it does not initiate momentum. Once the moment, momentum is initiated, it can accelerate, but it does not initiate by itself. Then who? Who actually initiates momentum? It's people. It's people whose ambition, aspiration, whose desire to excel, whose intent to achieve great heights, who want to solve problems, make a difference to the world, create an impact, they initiate momentum. They create momentum. Technology is just a tool to achieve, to accelerate momentum. Howard Schultz, the very famous um, former CEO of Starbucks, as all of you know, you're very familiar with this brand, I'm sure. He came in as an employee in this organization, the specialty coffee outlets across the globe. He came in and joined them as an employee, but later on became the owner and also became the CEO of the company. And he took the company from where it was to something which is today, where Starbucks today has probably close to 40,000 outlets across the globe. And it probably is adding one new outlet every day. You know, that's the power of innovation that this leader brought into the organization. But at the core of the innovation that he was driving was his immense faith in the people in the organization. This is what Howard Schul says. He says, you have to have a, you have to have a hundred percent belief in the core reasons of your being. The most important thing about innovation is purpose. What is the sense of purpose that I have as an individual? What is the sense of purpose that a team has? What is the sense of purpose an organization has? Without a sense of purpose, innovation is not possible. When Bill Gates started Microsoft, he had no idea that he would become the richest man in the world. But he had a purpose. His purpose was to make software which the common man can use. Because before the Microsoft suite of the Windows suite of products were launched, software was extremely complicated. Only some techies, experts were able to use software. But the common men and women were not able to use that. But when he brought in those the Windows suite of products with the GUI features and all these features, which made it so simple for common man to use. So I think as a purpose is absolutely important. And Howard Schultz says, care more than what others think wise. Dream more than what others think, think practical. Expect more than what others think possible. It is not just saying we value our employees. It is about showing it and investing in them. This is all about people. And his message is dream more than what others think is practical. 
when everybody else rejects something as impractical, you believe that maybe it can be tried, it can be tested, it can be made possible. When everybody believes that something is not possible, or when everybody believes that this person cannot deliver the goods, you probably have faith in that individual. And value your employees. Don't just talk about the fact that you value them. Show it to them that you value them. Invest in them. So that's the message that he delivered to the world. And he not only delivered this message, he also lived that for all practical purposes. So innovation is all about people. Because a great idea starts in the mind of an individual. A technology doesn't initiate that. It's an individual. So that's where at the crux of this is the role of an innovative leader. And an innovative leader, like all of you, can really make a difference to the organization. So what's the role of an innovative leader? It's three-pronged. An innovative leader is a creator, is a builder, is a provider. You must be thinking that when, when I'm saying an innovative leader is a creator, builder, you must be thinking that an innovative leader probably creates new products, builds new solutions, creates new technologies. But it's actually not that. It's actually not the primary responsibility of an innovative leader. But he or she is still a creator and still a builder. But an innovative leader is a creator of teams, creator and builder of culture, creator of the right environment where innovation can thrive, creator of a culture where innovation can flourish, build teams that can Bring, bring in best innovation, build people capability, build the right processes, create the right measurements, define the vision and strategy. I think I'm absolutely sure that IGNO has some of those great leaders who actually have built great teams, created the right environment where innovation can flourish who have created the right culture, who have constantly focused on people capability. The fact that you are having a session like this means the value that you, 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 you have in building capability. I'm sure as an organization, you constantly try to build the right processes and measures. And leaders like you set the vision for the organization, the strategy then you don't have to really worry about creating great, great products and solutions yourself. You have the right team, the right environment, the right people with the right capability who can build it for you. You give them the vision, you give them the strategy, you provide them the tools, the resources, the money, the budget, whatever the need for them to become successful. So that's the leader, that's the role of an innovative leader. He or she is a creator, builder, provider. I think that's how I look at the role of an innovative leader. If you can perform that role, I think everything else will fall in place. Now the question is, how would you create a culture of innovation in your, in your organization? What do you need to do differently? What do you need to ensure in order to drive a culture of innovation in your organization. The most important thing is to promote lifelong learning. If in your organization, learning is not an important activity for people, and if people are not continuously learning, innovation will die down after some time. Even if you have great innovation today, probably it will stop after some time. When Satya Nadella took over as the CEO of Microsoft, that was a time when Microsoft was in a downslide. Their revenues were dropping. 
their market position was shaking. That's that's the time when he came in and he figured out that the organization has a problem. And the problem was everybody thought that I know it all because I belong to one of the greatest technology companies in the world. I know everything. And he figured out that was the biggest problem. So he made a shift from I know it all mindset to I want to learn it all. I want to learn it all. From I know it all to I want to learn everything. That was the shift that brought Microsoft back on the road. Every organization needs to focus on that, which is absolutely critical. Another thing as a leader that you can drive is don't always try to be the best and don't encourage and force your people to be the best, but always try to be the first one. And you can become the best in some time. Because if you try to be the best and bring out the most perfect product in the market, and if that takes too long a time, please understand your competition might be the first one to reach the market with a similar product because your competition is also trying to innovate. So being the first one to hit the market is the most important thing. Jack Ma said something very similar and his advice was that become an early mover. If you try to be the best, but you are late in the game, you're going to lose the race because today is all about not just being the best. It's also about how quickly you are able to reach your customers, reach your market marketplace, because unless you are the first one, your competition is going to take the advantage. You might be working on in your lab, creating the best product in the world, but you would still not be successful if you're late in the game. As an innovative leader, the most important thing is to remove the fear of failure. Most traditional organizations define their goals and objectives and performance measurement systems in a way where failure is not encouraged. Failure leads to punishment, penalty, some form of action. In an environment like this, innovation cannot thrive. If as, you, as an innovative leader, you can go to your people and say, guys, work on this exciting idea. If you succeed, fine. If you don't succeed, it's okay. Don't worry about failure. You know, we, we have a great example of Chandrayaan 2, which, which failed. And, and the scientist went back to the drawing board and launched Chandrayaan 3, which was successful. But had the, if, if the administrators if the leaders of our scientific mission and community had taken them, taken our scientists to task, if they were criticized, if they were discouraged for, for not being successful in launching a lunar mission, do you think that they would have become successful the next time? It's important that we need to remove fear of failure from the minds of people. If you, if you do not do that, and if people operate in an environment of fear, innovation cannot happen. We saw when the mission failed, we saw our prime minister consoling the head of ISRO, and that was a great gesture that if you failed, it's okay. 
keep trying and we are with you i think as an innovative leader you have to play that role remove the fear of failure from the mind of people social amplification is absolutely important and that's something you need to look at as a leader look at what happened in in the in the lunar mission chandrayaan 3 is a great example if some of your great missions happen within the closed doors of a laboratory and and nobody knows about it it's not going to help but imagine the power of chandrayaan 3 and how successful the mission was and imagine the power of this this mission because of this success and the social amplification you know millions of people watching the landing the soft landing of the spacecraft on the moon with so much of enthusiasm and this social amplification gives a message to the people about the possibilities what the scientific community in this country can do it creates enthusiasm it talks about possibilities it encourages many other young people to come into this space into this domain and probably become a space scientist many organizations keep many of their innovations within the closed doors but that's not going to help talk about innovation talk about great successes talk about failures celebrate success which will encourage other employees in your organization to try this to try innovation because it will show them about new possibilities when india could reach the moon it also gives the message to the young people in the country that this country can do many more things if you can reach the moon you can do many more impossible things you can make many more impossible things possible so that's the power of social amplification and as a leader it's very important that you drive this providing feedback to people is extremely important as a leader because most organizations especially millennials and youngsters want feedback about how they are doing if you don't give them feedback you might give the message that they are not adding value so as an innovative leader is important that you give constant feedback to your people to your bright sparks to the talented team members continuously give them feedback what is what good stuff that they are doing where they need to do more it's absolutely important to drive a culture of innovation break hierarchies if an organization is hierarchical it's very unlikely innovation will thrive there i remember um something very 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 interesting you know um in in one of the companies which used to be very very hierarchical the new ceo who stepped in figured out that in this company nobody does anything without an approval of the manager right and and things were moving very slowly because if an employee is trying to do something he or she has to take permission from the manager to share it with others if if he or she is, has developed a new product or has a great idea you know is the manager who can share it with others and not the employee so he said he wrote to all his employees and said reach out to me you are the most important people in the organization and if you believe that i am as the ceo of the organization is probably five or six layers ever view and if you believe that you need some support and your manager manager is not able to provide that support break those chains of command break through those five or six layers or whatever number of layers 
that you see reach out to me this is my phone number give me a phone call or send me an email that i am working on an important project but i need this approval from you i need this help from you i need this support from you my manager is away he's traveling or he's on leave for next two weeks i do not want to wait for the next two weeks can you please step in and help me you know it's a powerful message going from the ceo to the employees that you are working for the organization your manager is working for the organization your manager's manager is working for the organization i am working for the organization and and if if each one of us are working for the organization we must become boundaryless reach out to each other make things happen hierarchies cannot come in the way of anything that we want to do as an innovative leader you have to encourage people to experiment they must try new things you must encourage them to try something which sounds very crazy which sounds like a mad idea encourage people to try i think that's important if you reject idea saying it's a silly idea it's a silly thought it's a stupid idea people are never going to try they will be discouraged to try allow people to experiment try out different things if they fail it's absolutely fine all of us know google as a successful organization we know great products that they have launched but we know very little about the infin the incredible number of the the large number of failures they had as an organization many of their products did not take off we probably know about you know gmail we probably know about google search we probably know about google cloud but there are thousands of initiatives that they tried experimented tested which never saw the light of the day we have no idea but that is the fact that's the reality and google is a great company great innovative company because they have encouraged people to try experiment and fail and with hundreds of failures behind their back they are still one of the most successful companies in the world anchor is unreasonable it's like elon musk saying that you know we're going to go to the space right somebody would say this is an you are a commercial organization you know why are you trying something like this this is for the scientific community to work on this for nasa to work on why do you want to go to the space but he proved that a business organization can also make it happen encourage the unreasonable anything that looks unreasonable don't discard it don't drop that idea try this this is what azim prem ji says all of you know the iconic business leader and philanthropist prem ji says if people are not laughing at your goals your goals are too small so ladies and gentlemen as leaders encourage people to take up unrealistic goals goals that everybody will laugh at if somebody says that my organization is working on an idea to increase the life span of individuals to 200 years from today which is about 8 80 years or 70 years or whatever everybody will laugh at it they will say you want to increase the life span of people to 200 years that's crazy but my dear ladies and gentlemen if people don't laugh at your goal it's a small goal what's so great about it what's so big about it if you want innovation to thrive encourage people to look at unrealistic goals build networks 
tomorrow is going to be very different it's not going to be the age of specialists of course we will have specialists but a professional who is a specialist in one field and has knowledge about multiple cross functional areas is going to be more successful and why i'm talking about building networks let me share an example with you google has come up with a product with with a device which can which can scan the retina of a human eye and predict whether an individual is going to have cancer in the next 6 months a device which can read the retina of an eye of a human eye and can predict if the person is going to have cancer in the next 6 months it's a powerful device now the question that i would like to ask you is who would have invented this who would have made it possible an eye specialist a med device guy a computer engineer a mechanical engineer a machine learning expert or an artificial intelligence expert or an eye specialist who would have made it possible ladies and gentlemen no single individual can make it happen you, you a company is inventing a device which can read the human eye and predict if a person is going to have cancer in the next 6 months so to create a device of this nature you will have to bring in multiple experts from from various fields you need eye specialists you need probably somebody who is a cancer specialist you need somebody who is a who is a device specialist you need somebody who probably is an artificial intelligence guy or a, or an somebody who has got expertise in machine learning or 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 probably deep learning etc large language models and so on you know to bring in all these experts who can create a product which is of incredible value it's possible when you build networks when you bring people together from cross functional fields tomorrow today and tomorrow belongs to multiple specializations one specialization is not going to one specialization is not going to help we have to bring in specialists from multiple fields we also have to encourage people to build multiple specializations this is where building networks is extremely careful extremely important bringing people from various fields so that you can create an outstanding product reverse mentoring is all about leveraging the power of millennials in the organization in most organizations the top leadership even today are while it is going to change in near future most um senior leaders are probably gen x um generation x but sometimes they may not have the kind of exposures millennials have to technology and new business models and new ways new ideas and so on it's a great idea to have some of your millennials mentor your senior leaders in the organization so ladies and gentlemen these are some of the things that you can do as innovative leaders in organization to foster a culture of innovation in your organization where your people will think innovation breathe innovation and create innovation i would like to pause here um and i told you i have got about 6 minutes in case um anyone has any question i would be happy to try and answer some of them thank you surya it was excellent listening to you always it, it's a pleasure listening to you and uh, a lot of learning and uh, your presentation what i say i mean people are there to give you feedback if anyone has got any questions so they can ask 
any question, any feedback that you want to give, you can uh, unmute and you can give your feedback. I'm Dr. P.K. Banerjee. Good evening. Good evening, Dr. Banerjee. Mm. It was an excellent speech. Your content, your process was excellent and delivery was very smooth. I congratulate you and I will expect more and more such lectures will be helpful for the students as well as us also. Thank you very much, Shuriyaji. Thank you, Dr. Banerjee. Thank you so much.